Hi, this blog has been prepared by Evolve Design to take you through the early stages of getting your plot ready to do your self-build project. My name is Sue Dewhurst and Evolve Design is my company. We were established in 2007 and we are qualified architectural technicians, certified passive house designers and also SAP energy assessors. Basically, we look at the technicalities of building a home rather than just drawing pretty pictures. We specialise in designing low energy and bespoke um, passive house homes to suit you and what it is you're looking for from your new home. We will take your ideas and designs and transpose them into a working tool for you. We also are able to offer a complete range of building systems so that you build using either traditional or modern methods of construction such as timber frame, solid walls with external wall insulation and also SIPs, low energy building systems. What we're going to be looking at in this particular blog is firstly buying your plot of land, then how you can choose who to work with to make sure that you do end up with what it is you're actually wanting and also getting you to plan from the beginning the technologies that you're going to use um, because what you don't want to do is to end up looking at things as an afterthought and then having to fit them in. So why is buying your plot so important? Well basically there isn't a great deal of land in the UK available so you want to make sure that what it is you're looking for um, in the form of your home is going to be able to be built on it. The land doesn't have to be flat, but it does help. You may watch television programs that have wonderful designs being in, built into the side of hillsides, and that's all very romantic. But unfortunately, those build costs tend to be really expensive. So if you do have a limiting budget, make sure that you're going to be able to afford it. And plots do come in all shapes and sizes. They can be small and fat, they can be short and, and long. So, you know, make sure, again, that the house that you have in your mind's eye can be built on this plot. Land can come as infill plots, as brownfield sites where something can be knocked down and then rebuilt, or even as part of a garden. You may know somebody who has a, a very large house and a very large plot who maybe wants to release some of their equity. Well, it could be the chance of you to offer um, a reasonable sum of money to have part of their garden and this is quite often the case. What really is the most important though is the orientation of the pot so that you make the most of the solar gain. What you want to make sure is that you're able to get as much natural light and natural warmth from the, the sun as you possibly can and designing to suit this is so very important. We have to make sure in passive design that your main windows are south facing. So again, if your plot is facing the road and it happens to be north facing, then you need to look at the orientation of how you have your windows. We really look to have minimal windows on the north elevation because that's the cold side of any house. And in this particular project, what we were doing here was to take in views. It's no good buying a plot of land that is north facing with the most spectacular views and then not being able to see them. So you then have to look at the, the whole thermal envelope of the home to make sure that you can take in some views, but you're not losing too much energy. Also the local vernacular of the plot. Have a look and see what you're surrounded by. Um, if you've got lots of small houses, then obviously you're not going to be able to build a castle. So look and see what your um, neighbourhood is going to look like. If you have lots of bungalows, then it's unlikely that you'll be allowed to build a two to three storey dwelling. If you're in a very rural area, the planners may not like something ultra contemporary. Or um, possibly if you're in a very... Um, traditional estate looking type of area, you may not get away with building a barn like uh, home. So do think very carefully of buying your plot to suit what it is you're looking to achieve. It is possible to design a home that looks very traditional on the outside but that can be very contemporary inside and likewise the other way around. 
So don't be put off just because the outside may not look as you originally thought it would do. Planners are often thought of to have wills of their own, but what happens in reality is the fact that they have a whole set of planning policies and frameworks that they have to work to. So make sure that you go online for the local authority that your plot of land falls into and have a look to see what their planning policies and framework agreements are. They are all listed there, you just have to read through to make sure you understand them. And also to make sure that you're not going to be buying a plot of land that maybe has some special agreement attached to it, like a section 106, which means that they're looking for affordable homes to be built. So it's unlikely that you'd be able to build anything over 100 square metres on that plot of land. You particularly need to be careful if you're buying any land that doesn't come with outline or detailed planning approval. That doesn't mean to say you can't buy that land, but it just means to say you need to be insured by perhaps having a conversation with the planners first that they are likely to give planning approval for something to be built there. So do go online, do check that the um, the house that you want to build is likely to be built on there. Who to work with is also very important. You need to choose very carefully um, who you want to come on board with you through this journey, which will be extremely emotional. Building sites seldom go to plan, so you want to make sure that you know it goes as well as it possibly can. It is an emotional experience, and it is the most money you're ever likely to spend on one single thing. You need to be comfortable with the person that you've chosen to work with, somebody you can let off steam with. Building sites never go to plan. You need to have somebody that you can have a very frank conversation with because it will happen. It is like going into another marriage and they have their ups and downs and so will your project. So think of who you want to work with and also draw up a list of questions that you want to ask them. We have a list of questions that we like to ask our clients and it's this needs to be a two-way thing. So ask them how up to date their CPD is. CPD is continued professional development. Are they aware of the new changes? Do they understand how you need to easily achieve um, the new regulation changes to Partel, which govern the use of energy? What are ACDs? Do they know what um, accredited construction details are? Do they realise that by using these, it's not just good building practice, but it also overcomes energy loss through thermal bridging? And are they up to date with all the modern technologies out there? Do they know how MVHR works or whether to have air source or ground source heating? And do they know what modern methods of construction are out there and the differences your lifestyle can make on choosing the right one that suits you and the home you're going to live in? But most importantly, do get references. Ask for people that you can contact. Don't let them do the contacting for you. You lift the phone or you write an email and talk to them and find out what their experiences were. It may not be that they actually have something against the person they worked with, but it could be that they tell you something that they desperately wanted, but now on a second time wouldn't ever use it again. These sorts of things are really important and you can learn from them. So do talk to people, do have the chance of speaking to them about their projects. And this is something at Evolve Design we're very keen to offer you so that you do get a true understanding of all the services that we're offering and talking about. Draw up your wish list. Um, you know what it is you're looking for. We're not telepathic, um, but we do, from talking to you, get a good understanding of the type of people you are and what it is you're looking for and what you're wanting your home to be. Um, but you know how you like your rooms to flow, whether you want lots of little rooms or whether you want one large living space. What style of windows you like. So write it all down, or better still, get a vision board. Use it like a scrapbook so you can stick images there and then as you change them, you can replace them. Look at stairs, even go and look at other people's houses so that you can get a better idea of what is available out there. 
There are so many different manufacturers of windows, of ceiling coverings, of floor coverings, of tiles. The list is endless and you've got to think of them all. So, you know, look at how this could be made easier for you. But really, start planning from the beginning. Plan your plot and plan all the practical things that you're going to need in your home. When you come to looking at the design of your home, you need to make sure that you've taken consideration for things like heating and ventilation. So design the, the sim from the beginning and not as an afterthought. The last thing you want is to have something that needs maintenance stuffed in the corner of an attic. So in modern homes where most of them now, because of the um, changes to the regulations needing better air tightness, mechanical ventilation with heat recovery is becoming more a norm. So stuffing it in the corner of an attic doesn't work. Make sure you've planned it into an area of the home that you can get to it at easily. That's brought us to a close for this blog. Our next one will give you an insight into the different building standards that you can build to, either the building regulations or the passive house requirements. Thank you very much.